Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to align the encoder on uh, the motor. Uh, per the manual under the introduction says, AC drives re rely on knowing the motor position in order to stay synchronized while driving the motor. Before the motor is mounted on a machine, the motor's encoder commutation tracks are aligned with the motor phases. The drive applies sinusoidal voltages to the three-phase input to rotate the motor shaft to a starting position. Typically, there will be four poles and a full rotation of the shaft. In Centroid software, the index pulse can be aligned with any one of these. The drive also looks at the commutation lines from the encoder to give it a coarse position of the shaft for smooth movement on power-up. These commutation signals are interpreted by the drive as zones 1 through 6. As the motor turns clockwise looking at the output shaft, the encoder counts should increase. Centroid AC motors use a differential 8-pole, 5-volt quadrature encoder with an index pulse. The encoder resolution depends on the motor and the drive, see below. This procedure can also be repeated if you suspect the encoder alignment is incorrect. An incorrect alignment will show the following symptoms. The axis is jumping. The motor is running roughly. Motor runs better in one direction or the other. The motor has an uneven amount of current draw in one direction than the other. Large current draw with a light load. Alright, under prerequisites. If connecting a motor to the drive for the first time, please complete the following steps. Check for greater than 100 mega ohms between the motor chassis and power terminals. We've done that. With the motor connected to the drive, confirm continuity between the drive chassis and the motor chassis. We've also done that. On the drive terminal, check for 100 mega ohms between your power and shield terminals. We've done that as well. Check VM wiring for correct polarity, we've also done that. Additional information on motor testing can be found in your installation manual and tech bulletin 155. Tools, equipment, tools and equipment for a coder alignment. A set of metric and SAE hex keys, a small Phillips head screwdriver, Loctite Blue 242, it's optional. If removing the motor from the machine, a set of clamps such as Irwin Quick Grips, and you saw earlier that uh, we have the uh, motors clamped down. If there's any contamination or debris inside the cap, but basic cleaning supplies such as paper towel and all-purpose cleaner, my caps are clean, they're new encoders, and it's a, it's a good uh, point worth mentioning. Uh, you want to make sure that these caps seal up, uh, the end caps seal up the uh, encoder so no dust and uh, debris can get in. Those encoders are not uh, dustproof. They have to be inside a dustproof enclosure. If changing the encoder, you'll, you, you will need a quantum devices QR12-10000-8-A-B-E-A and a 10,000 line 8 pole 5 volt 8 millimeter shaft encoder. Encoder pigtail pinouts are listed in Appendix B. Uh, while they are listed in the appendix, uh, Again, I strongly recommend that you buy everything from Centroid, uh, including the encoder cable, the, uh, the uh, pigtail from the encoder to the MS connector, uh, the kit to mount the encoder, and so forth. It'll just minimize headaches for you and prevent damage to the drive. Okay, alignment setup. The motor must be disconnected from the machine to have or to have the machine drive belt removed for alignment process. This procedure is best performed on a sturdy bench where you'll have good lighting and easy access to the encoder. If the motor is moved from the machine, the motor frame must be firmly secured to the bench using clamps or some other attachment method. The motor may try to jump around during the procedure, especially if something goes wrong during the alignment. Before starting the alignment procedure, the drive software must be configured correctly. We've already configured the drive software. Okay, alignment procedure. Danger, do not jog the axis until instructed. One, remove the motor end cap. Two, if installing a new encoder, remove the old encoder and attach the new, con the new encoder. Lightly tighten the encoder ears and the encoder set screws so the encoder spins when the shaft moves. This is important, especially on these encoders. The set screws on them are only 440. They're very small, so do not over tighten them. They just, for the first time, they just need to be stuck so the encoder turns. What's going to be happening here is we're going to be loosening those screws and rotating the encoder on the motor shaft.
to align the encoder with the motor. Connect the power cable and coder cable from the drive to the motor. Those are done. Power up your drive and control system running the Centroid CNC software. Alright, so we're about ready to do that. <clears throat> In your CNC software, access the PID menu by pressing F1, Setup, F3, Config, and F4 PID. So I'm going to reset this. F1 Setup, F3, 137, F4 PID. Homing the motor is not necessary. Looking at the motor mounting flange, manually re rotate the motor shaft clockwise. The absolute position on the PID screen should increase as circled in the picture above. So let me go over there and do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the motor shaft clockwise as you face it. And there you can see the encoder counts are increasing. Okay, so that's, so as we go that way the encoder counts should increase and they are increasing. Okay, so we saw the encoder counts increase as we rotated the shaft clockwise. Notice ACDC drive needs the encoder correctly connected wired before starting up the CNC11 software drive. If the encoder is not detected upon startup, you'll need to restart both the ACDC drive and the CNC11 software before trying to test the encoder again. Users can troubleshoot drive errors through the HSC bit screen definitions as described in the ACDC servo drive manual. Go to the drive configuration menu by pressing F8 drive. Okay, here's F8 drive as shown below in figure 2. Okay, press F2 move sync as circled in figure 2. The axis selected is shown underneath the P PWM KPS circled in figure 3. If you are not on the correct axis, press F1 to toggle the axis until the correct axis label is on the screen. So we are on the correct axis here. I'm going to press F2, move sync, and if we need to change it, we would press F1. Finally, press F10, go. The shaft should rotate, so we're going to do that. And there you see the shaft rotating. For the first move sync rotation may cause the motor to jerk or move roughly. Move sync a few more times by pressing F2 move sync, then F2, F2 move sync, then F10 go repeatedly. All move syncs after the first sync should cause the shaft to rotate smoothly. If the motor oscillates wildly, moves erratically, or makes loud unusual noises, kill the motor power immediately. There are some uh, notes here. Danger and incorrectly wired configured motor may move violently or unpredictably when attempting move sync. Keep your body and others away from the motor when moving, when move syncing for the first time and be prepared to hit the emergency stop button. Danger. Large motors may have a tendency to oscillate violently during a move sync due to the nature of current feedback loop. It is recommended that for 3KW and larger motors, that you adjust the motor's current to half of the recommended value in the current feedback menu while moving, move syncing. After the encoder alignment process is complete, set the current back to the recommended setting. Notice, if the move, motor slightly oscillates after move syncing or continues to move a little rough while move syncing, grab the motor on the shaft carefully with your hand. Move sync the motor while gently squeezing the motor shaft. If the oscillations and or jerky movements go away after applying a small amount of load to the shaft, this is normal. This problem will not occur during normal motor operation. When you grab that motor shaft, mine have flanges on it. Make sure you have a gloved hand and grab it from the outside. Don't grab it from the front. Uh, you've got to be extra safe and cautious when, when doing this. Uh, it would be better to have bare shafts. I have flanges. Um, as you saw, my motor does turn, it oscillates, but it stops, so there's no need to grab a hold of that motor shaft. Notice, if no motor movement occurs, an error was encountered. ACDC users can troubleshoot drive errors through the HSC bit screen definitions as described in the ACDC manual. Okay. So the next page.
Keep running the move sync operation till a point where the encoder reading is closest to zero or its maximum encoder count, which is 40,000 in my case. The encoder reading is circled in figure four. So let's do that. We're going to move it a couple more times. Do it again. And you see we're approaching that 40,000 mark. Okay, we've passed it. So we either, we're on either side of that index pulse. We're going to go back around until we get close to 40,000 again. So we're reading the actual encoder counts. And what we want to do is get them as close to zero as possible. Okay, here we are. We're at 38,286. So now I'm going to, there's a picture it shows. We're going to take a Allen key. We're going to loosen the encoder collar on the shaft, and we're going to rotate it until it says tighten encoder now. We can get it very close, and then we there's the flange of the encoder where it mounts to the motor. We can also use that. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and show you that. We're going to watch the encoder reading on the screen while we rotate that shaft. Okay, we'll get our key here. We're going to loosen the encoder. Okay, I'm going in the right direction now. You can see the encoder counts increasing. This is Titan encoder now. So I'm going to go ahead and snug that up. You see a Titan encoder message? I'm going to snug it up. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to loosen the foot of the encoder and see if we can get it even a little closer. This would be perfectly fine to leave it where it's at, but let's see what we can do here. Okay, I overshot it, go right back the other way. Probably got these set screws a little bit too loose, so I'm gonna snug one down. Okay, we need to get this within, within 25 encoder counts of zero, and we're within six. And as you snug down the screws, it could change a little bit. So snug them up a little bit at a time each way. Double check our shaft and collar. Okay. okay, we actually got within two encoder counts of zero. Press F2, move sync, and F10. Rotate the shaft motor shaft several full revolutions. Verify the software still displays Titan encoder now when closest to the zero position. Some encoder readjustment may be needed. Observe the commutation counts 1 through 6 consecutively. The commutation count is displayed below encoder reading as circled in figure 4. Here's commutation. At rest position, the commutation zone should be either a 1 or a 6 only. A 0 or 7 as the commutation value indicates a bad encoder or wiring problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this move sync. A few more times. F2, F10. F2, F10, F2, F10, F2, F10, F2, F10, 
and as it settles you see it ends up back very near where we tightened it and we have the tighten encoder now let's go another revolution f2 f10 f2 f10 f2 f10 f2 f10 and there we go it says tighten encoder now and lastly it says loosely tighten the encoder cap onto the motor be careful placing the encoder cable in the end cap if the cable is causing any strain or pushing on the encoder it will twist the encoder out of alignment that's not a problem this one because the cap is quite huge so uh, I'm not going to put the caps back on them after it says reboot the drive and control system so I'm going to go ahead and, sh and do that now Okay, after a reboot, fast jog the motor in each direction to verify correct operation. All right, so we're working on Z. I'm going to take it out of incremental and put it in continuous. I'm going to leave it in slow jog rate. And let's go ahead and jog that motor. There you can see it turning slowly. As I press the Z plus, you see that motor shaft rotating in the clockwise direction. As I press Z minus, it rotates in the counterclockwise direction. Now let's go ahead and go fast jog, Z plus. And Z minus. In the drive configuration menu, do a Final, move sync to check to verify that the motor is still aligned correctly. Look for the red message saying tighten encoder now when the motor is closest to zero. So let's do that. We go F1 setup, F3 config, 137, PID, drive, and we're going to do the move sync operation on Z, and we're going to go go. And again, go, and again, go, and it settles back right to tighten encoder now. You are done aligning the encoder. The motor is ready for normal operation after the system has been rebooted again. Uh, it says if there is not a rubber o-ring or gasket between the motor and the end cap, remove the end cap again. Apply a bead of non-corrosive RTV sealant, such as Dow Corning 3165, onto the end cap mounting surface as shown below. Reinstall the end cap. All right, that concludes this video on uh, in aligning the encoder to the motor and setting up the AC-DC drive. a demo of a, a retrofit I'm doing using a Fanuc uh, red top motors. It's the first one I've done and I'm using the Centroid AC-DC uh, drives. I had to set those up. Connected to uh, Centroid Oak. Do everything on the bench first before taking them out into the field, mounting them up to the machine. The machine in this case is a Betts vertical lathe. So, uh, yeah, everything went well. We had to get the encoders replaced on the Fanuc 
servos and uh, had to align the encoders uh, to the motor and that went pretty well. The centroid instructions were pretty straightforward.